When Tottenham Hotspur hosted Manchester United on New Year's Day 1996, the Premiership title race was really hotting up. United had been as much as 10 points behind leaders Newcastle, but a win against Spurs and the gap would be just a single point. Tottenham had improved under Jerry Francis, fourth in the league, they wanted to show that they could mix it with the big boys. They were without skipper Gary Mabbott, who failed a fitness test, so Sol Campbell moved into defence and Darren Caskey came into midfield in the one change from the 11, which had lost to Blackburn in their previous game. United had a spate of injuries, so there was another start for on-trail Bordeaux defender William Prunier in the absence of first-choice centre-back Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister. Eric Cantona skippered the Red Devils and was partnered up front by Andy Cole. Paul Parker came in at right back to replace the latest injury victim, Dennis Irwin. An air of expectation around White Hart Lane. Gerald Ashby is the referee, Peter Brackley the commentator. Prunier's first contribution is somewhat wayward. Dean Austin will be operating on the right-hand side of Tottenham's back line, which Jerry Francis has had to reassemble in the absence of Gary Mabbott. Rosenthal closed out quickly by Keane. Here's Paul Parker getting another opportunity at the senior side, and his chances have been very limited by injury and indeed the form of others too. Came back into the team for the match at Leeds and had a real struggle in the centre of the back line. One of his errors led to the Leeds goal scored by Tony Yaboa. But he's back in tonight, Parker. Of course, he has represented his country in that right back position. Stuart Nethercourt, who's in midfield today for Tottenham, he is nominally a back four player. But such is the extent of that injury list that Tottenham have. Jerry Francis has no alternative really but to play one or two players out of position at the moment. Got a whole midfield missing through injury. He looks significant of course being Darren Anderton, the England international, who would hope to return to the team by Boxing Day, but I think that was a little optimistic to put it mildly. Good header by Austin. Armstrong has been flexed so well up front to Sheringham. Austin's ball in, dealt with by Prunier. He looked very assured, and certainly his passing was immaculate on Saturday. Just caught out of position once or twice, and Alex Ferguson feels this is his real test tonight. We'll see how good a defender he is. Dimitrescu with the corner. It goes for Armstrong, and behind for a goal kick. Tony Sheringham, Tottenham's leading goal scorer this season, but he has been carrying this back injury. And I think Joey Francis wanted really to take the chance to rest him over the Christmas period, but there's so many other players out, he just couldn't afford to. Austin. Just checking round, it looks as if, in fact, Campbell is playing in midfield and never caught at the back. Here's Dumitrescu. Such a talented player, but he hasn't really made his mark at Tottenham. Cantona. This is Rosenthal and the deflection, which might have embarrassed Peter Schmeichel then. Rosenthal lively in these first few minutes. Schmeichel, who was of course guilty of a very costly error against Queen's Park Rangers at the weekend when he Kicked his clearance straight at Danny Di Keo, and the result was a goal. Far too casual on that occasion, Schmeichel. Dumitrescu with the corner. Again, it's a dangerous one off the post. Sheringham. So unlucky then. He's first to the corner. And it was right against the outside of the upright there with Schmeichel beaten. Held in invitingly, the corner by Dumitrescu and Sheringham with the header against the post. That's Edinburgh with the header. Nethercott. 
A foul then by Dumitrescu. On Paul Parker. Dumitrescu starting on the left and Rosenthal on the right. Sheringham, of course, as the main striker through the middle. Parker. Now Prudier. He's found the keeper. Captain R. This is Philip Neville. Now Captain R. This is David Becker. And he scored four times this season. Becker, one of the many youngsters, of course, being given their head in the senior side. And he has responded admirably. This is Gary Neville, the England international. Seems to be a regular in the England side now, though, of course, at right back, rather than in the centre of the defence, where he's playing for United at the moment. Armstrong, another positive run by him. Options in the middle with Dumitrescu and Sheringham arriving too. The composed defending by Gary Neville. He certainly doesn't seem out of place in this central defensive role. Amazing to think he was in United's reserve team at the beginning of last season. Ended the campaign as an England international. Rosenthal. This is Armstrong. But strike two! Oh. Well, Peter Schmeichel clearly thought it was going over. In fact, it struck the top of the crossbar. Much to the relief of Schmeichel. Just wondering if there's an injury problem with Schmeichel. He's not taking the goal kicks. He doesn't look at all comfortable. That's twice now. He could only look on in bewilderment as the ball has struck. Well, first the post, now the crossbar. We did wonder why uh, Talkington was on the bench. Alex Ferguson had initially named three outfield players. Well, maybe that's why. Maybe Schmeichel does have a problem. Here's Kicks now, hoping to pose a problem at the other end for United. But it's harmlessly full. Or has the referee decided that's a back pass? I think he has. It's always such a dilemma for referees. That looked a bit harsh for me. It has to be an intentional back pass. It certainly came off a Tottenham player, I think it was Calderwood. And the referee has given the free kick. And rather than argue, Tottenham will be better advised now to compose themselves, gather their thoughts and their concentration now, to face this kick which Ryan Giggs is taking for United. And the header from Katana! Cole trying to squeeze it in, and it's not even a corner. And the header from Katana, that's Ember on the line with Walker, and between them, they just managed to keep it out. Now, Giggs on the counter-attack for United. Beckham inside him. Cole has to fetch it, though. Parker on to Keane. Cole. Giggs, oh, great touch. Cole! Fabulous move there by Manchester United. Cole appreciating the service. And all that was missing then was the end product. Rosenthal clashing with Philip Neville. And then Cantona, of all people, gives it away. This is Calderwood. Asking a lot there of Armstrong. Gary Neville is there for United. Austin. He's got support from Armstrong. Rosenthal inside him. And Sheringham is onside! United looked in vain for an offside flag and it wasn't forthcoming. The goal coming on 35 minutes. A well-worked move then by Tottenham and it really caught United out. Sheringham between Prunier and Beckham and he's beaten Schmeichel who looked to be struggling and he was almost motionless as Sheringham knocked it past him. Great first touch by Sheringham. Four minutes, 
Tottenham lead Manchester United by a goal to nil. Here's Keane for United. But now Neville. United replying strongly and it's goal! 1 1, two goals in the space of a minute have really brought this game to life now. Andy Cole, four goals in four games to mark his return to goal scoring form. Such a cohesive move by United. Nicky Butt releasing Philip Neville down that left hand side. Beckham couldn't reach it at full stretch, but Andy Cole certainly could. First goal for Manchester United, scored by number 17. Jerry Francis won't be happy with his team's defending, as his expression there would suggest. And likewise, Alex Ferguson with the Uniteds at the other end. Here's Keane. This seems to be sitting in front of the back line, Roy Keane, tonight. Influencing the game from there. Here's Keane now. Releasing Giggs. Another probing run by the little Welshman. Now here's Keane. Keane again. Taking this chance to come forward and link with Cantona. It's Kasky who broke it up. And then Dean Austin determined in the tackle. Away by Nethercock. Armstrong trying to hold off Neville. He thought there was a bit of shirt tucking going on. Still Armstrong. And he's forced the corner off Philip Neville. The rip roaring encounter now at White Hart Lane. Up comes Calderwood once more, to pose his threat in the air. Nethercott as well. I'm sure Nicky Butts going to out jump. Dumitrescu as ever taking the corner. And the header's gone over the top from Chris Armstrong. And the uh, aerial menace of the likes of Calderwood, Nethercott and Armstrong. There's plenty to concern Manchester United. Here's Giggs. Flying at defenders again, looking to commit Austin. Way by Nethercott. Giggs looking so eager for Manchester United again tonight. Chester down by Cantona. Dumitrescu. Out by Neville, here's Butt. Captain R couldn't get to it. It goes Keane. Just a driving force for Manchester United. Here's another one, young Nicky Butt. Beckham with a cross in. And the header flashing wide from Captain R. Inside the last minute now of the first half. Which is certainly an uh, ebb and flow from end to end. Cantona, it's about three headers he's got in tonight. This one, though, was well wide of the target. In fairness to him, there's some pressure on him. Maybe even a little nudge then by Rosenthal. Sheringham. Austin with the throw. Almost into stoppage time as Philip Neville intervenes for Manchester United. So the last action of the first period being played out deep into United territory. The 45 minutes are up. Off Neville. It was Kasky, now Austin. Keane's tackle wasn't effective enough, but it should have thrown in by Saul Campbell. And right on the stroke of half time, Tottenham had regained the lead. Saul Campbell. Well, Jerry Francis, I'm sure, had praised that for the persistence of Austin down the right. 
Keane couldn't quite get his tackle in. Came back there, maybe off Parker, maybe off Sheringham. Campbell struck it through venomously past Second Peter Schmeichel. Goal for Spurs, scored by number 23, Sol Campbell. Well, injured or not, I don't think he'd have got down to that one anyway. Minutes exactly. What a second half in prospect now. Here's Parker. And Francis will be hoping his team will keep it tight this time. Teams are so often vulnerable, as we always say, when they've just scored a goal. But there's no time for United to reply this time. Sol Campbell, just before half-time, to make it 2-1 to Tottenham. All this after Andy Cole have almost immediately equalised the goal on 35 minutes from Teddy Sheringham, which should put Tottenham in front. It's been a gripping first half. I think it's going to get even better too in the second period. Half-time at White Hart Lane, Tottenham 2, Manchester United 1. Now Keane to Prunier. And Simpson have taken over from Cantona as the bad boy of French football. That's Sheringham's pass. And away by Neville. And Tottenham came rushing out, but Neville decided not to risk it. And cleared anyway. With Chris Armstrong lurking just behind him. Once again, United have been punished at the back. Some woeful defending there. Just three minutes into the second half. And Chris Armstrong has made it 3-1. That deep cross from Kasky. Sheringham doesn't get it to it, but Rosenthal does. And then Chris Armstrong. Well, he was in the right place at the right time. But where, oh where, was the Manchester United defending? And the goal time... 7 minutes 26 seconds. Captain R. United will need his inspiration in this second half. They are to cut back. Parker. Hakeem. This is Gary Neville. Philip Neville. Captain R. has shown for him. And to Becker. This is Parker. On for Keane. Good save. Ian Walker got his body right behind the shot net from Keane. And the chance has gone. Roy Keane, who scored that second goal for United against Newcastle. Walker stays on his line this time. That's away for another corner. Such a hammer blow for Manchester United to suffer. With the second half barely underway. Beckham and Gick sorting out this corner. Beckham with a cross, it's whipped in. Cole off the line. Saved again, Captain R. Short. Won't go in. What an escape that for Tottenham. Gick. That's a foul by Chris Armstrong. What a left off end for Tottenham. A yellow card for Armstrong. Whose goal has just given up Tottenham a two goal cushion. But now United are coming back at them. Kepler almost on the end of it. There's Cole! Inches wide at that far post from Anthony Cole. It's on there by Nicky Butt, and Cole has hooked it back, and beyond Captain R at the far post. And that was Rosenthal who cleared off the line, with a tremendous scramble. How on earth did that not go in? Laid off by Cantona to Prunier. Now Parker. Cantona.
Cantona has drifted into some space. And he's released Nicky Butt. Well, Cole was in the middle. Well, Butt could have pulled it back. And he went for glory and couldn't beat Ian Walker. This is Philip Neville. Hastily upfield. And the back line had pushed efficiently forward. So Cole was caught offside. Tottenham have lost only two of their last 18 in the Premier. And that defeat, remember, at Ewood Park was their first away in the campaign. They haven't been as convincing at home, in fact, as they've been on their travels. And they very nearly survived on Saturday as Sheringham led a recovery. Is that off the arm of Chris Armstrong? No, Sheringham with a cross. Armstrong tennis! 4-1! Chris Armstrong! Such an intelligent ball played in, and such a clinical finish from Armstrong. And he can manage a smile now. The goal on 66 minutes. I wondered there if it was a hint of a handball, but no, I think it was a chest of Armstrong. Shangham's cross, Armstrong hasn't really been picked up. And it was a very decisive finish from a man in form. Goal time, 65 minutes, 55 seconds. And Alex Ferguson, not surprisingly, looking very glum. <laughs> On by Sharp, good turn by Giggs. There were plenty of red shirts in the middle. If he could have supplied the service. Beckham and Giggs with the corner. Crossed in by Beckham. He goes Prunier and a goal from Andy Cole. No. It's been rolled out. The foot was certainly high. His athleticism was quite astonishing then. And I'm sure the referee is saying that the foot was almost in the face of the defender. No motion on the face of Alex Ferguson. Let's see it again here. Prunier with the challenge. And it was hooked in by Cole, and right in front of the face of Colin Calderwood. This is Paul Parker. He thought he was setting for the throw, but in fact it's Tottenham. Armstrong who's posed such a threat up front alongside Sheringham and the ever willing support of Rosenthal and Co. Beckham too long for Cole in goes Beckham again they able to keep it in play Cole Cantona hovering in the middle here is Cantona laid back for Cole now Lee Sharp that's his strike and a wonderful save by Ian Walker. I thought for a moment then he was deceived by the deflection. And United head off in search of what will only be now a consolation goal. Sharp. Time almost up. Just a question now of how much Joe Ashby will add on for stoppages. I think there'll be too many. Sheringham, Gasky, who's won his socks off in midfield. Really has worked so hard there, Gasky on his call up for the senior side. The faith shown in him by Jerry Francis has brought the right response. And there is the final whistle, a great night for Jerry Francis and for Tottenham. Four goals to one. A tremendous victory for Jerry Francis's team and one United's fans would prefer to forget. Tottenham finished the season eighth, frustratingly for them, just three points shy of Aston Villa in fourth place. 
Spurs' watertight backline was the foundation of their season, with the likes of Ian Walker and Sol Campbell gaining international recognition for their exploits. The defeat was a major setback for Alex Ferguson's team, but United were strong of character and Fergie's fledglings battled their way back, going on a 17-game unbeaten run to overhaul leaders Newcastle and secure their third Premiership trophy.